Thanks a lot uh, to the organizers for the invitation to this very nice place uh, and the possibility to speak here. So my topic is again in spirit of rough volatility modeling from uh, a little bit different point of view, but also affine and of course very much inspired by the work of Mathieu and co-authors and also uh, by the work on affine water processes by Martin and Sergio and Eduardo. Uh, so, yeah, the first slide is more or less the same. So it's uh, rough volatility modeling. We learned in the morning that volatility is rough. And uh, so this is our inspiration. And uh, also this affine water processes that Martin just presented, uh, which can be obtained as scaling limits of Hawks processes. So this is in the work of Mathieu and Omar and Masaki, where they show what Martin also pointed out, that certain Hawks processes, uh, so the intensity of certain Hawks processes converges to uh, the rough Coxingers or Ross process. And the goal of our work is to unify this and to show a Markovian structure because, uh, you, uh, uh, as Martin pointed out, uh, all these models are not Markovian, but uh, by passing to some infinite dimensional affine process, we can actually show this Markovian structure. And the goal is to unify these Hox type processes uh, together with these affine Walter processes. And finally, to have also some new numerical approximations of these rough volatility models um, via finite dimensional affine processes. Okay, so here are the motivating examples, uh, namely uh, the Hox process. So this uh, is only to fix a little bit already the notation. So uh, the Hox process denoted by N is a process that jumps by one with the intensity given by this lambda. And here we have already this convolutional form. So we have this base, um, a base intensity lambda zero, then we have something deterministic, so a deterministic function B convolved with a kernel phi, and this uh, same kernel appears here, where here this is an integral against this Hox process N. So this is the typical form of a Hox process, or usually you don't have this term, but uh, in order to, to state this general framework. And in fact, uh, what uh, Mathieu and Omar and Masaki showed is that if you scale this Hox process, in, uh, if you do a particular scaling, then this converges to, uh, to this, uh, uh, this rough Coxingers or Ross process, which uh, Martin was already showing before, where we have, so this is the usual um, CIR process, only that here this kernel uh, appears. And this, you, this, this variance, the square root of you, it, you plug into the, the log price process, and this then gives you the rough Heston model. So this is only repeating what, what appeared before. And our goal is to, to unify uh, these types of models in, in, in one, frac uh, uh, one framework. And this is the setting to do that. So we, we have a state space E, uh, and uh, the one which we consider here is um, so some, some closed proper convex cone denoted by C times Rn. So in order to, to capture, for instance, the Heston model, where we have the log price being an, an, a component in R and the, the variance being a component in R plus. Uh, so notation-wise, we have this process Z, which uh, lives in this, in this product space, and the X component is the cone valid component, and the Y component is the Rn component. And the, the common framework for, for um, these processes are this stochastic Walter equation that Martin already introduced before. So um, here, uh, 
we have a starting value set zero, then this k is a, a matrix valued kernel, also um, square, locally square integrable, and we suppose here that we have this block diagonal form, so here these are for the cone components and these are for the, for the Rn components, and here we have um, a linear part without this stochastic part, this would be simply a stochastic uh, Volter equation which has been studied a lot, and here we add this stochastic part where we have a martingale and for this martingale we do not only um, suppose Brownian motion but it can be also have a jump component. So we have here a martingale such that each component is in H2 and uh, its characteristics, so it's a uh, Markovian um, uh, Eton type martingale in the sense that we have the S characteristics for this uh, predictable quadratic variation and uh, it depends uh, always, the characteristics depend on the current state of set. So we have here some covariance matrix for the continuous martingale part and here the compensator of the jumps, this is this F which depends uh, in some functional way on the current state. Uh, and yeah, the B is the deterministic function and this B is some matrix here. So this, uh, under these models, the, the, these Hox process types and uh, also the rough volatility model can be captured. Uh, so also some notation uh, concerning this resolvents that appeared also in Martin stock. So the, the, the resolvent, which is also called resolvent of the second type, is a kernel that satisfies this equation. So this kernel K that we started with convolved with this R and then um, the commuted, uh, a uh, uh, commutative version of it should be k minus r and you can think of this r simply as the uh, geometric series where, where you have this um, a minus one uh, to the power k when in this definition. And then also the resolvent of the first kind that Martin also had, this is exactly this equation, so k convolved with this L, this resolvent of the first kind gives you the identity matrix and this is something which does not always exist, but in the case of this completely monotone kernels it does. And uh, we will assume in certain cases that we have that. And uh, also notation-wise, so uh, what will often appear is this kernel times the matrix B and the uh, resolvent of that one is denoted by this RB. And then what will appear often is this NB, this is the kernel minus this RB convolved with K. So in the case when B is equal to zero, this NB is simply the kernel and otherwise when B is equal to the identity, then we have by this resolvent equation, this NB will be R. Okay, so here are the, the examples of, of, of several kernels and resolvents and this L here, which uh, Martin was also pointing out. In particular, this fractional kernel, it's resolvent with the meter gleffler function and uh, this, this L, which corresponds to this fractional derivative. Okay, so the first goal was to find some Markovian structure behind these Volter equations. And um, what we do is to, to use all these uh, conditional expectation that appeared in the characteristic function that Martin showed us. So what we define is what I call this variance swap curve, although Z does not really correspond to a, to a variance, but, but to give a name to it. So this WT of X is the conditional expectation of our Walter process at time T plus X conditioned on FT. So this is the curve curve of our variance process, uh, um, variance swaps, and note that if we evaluate that at zero, then we get back our initial process set. And for this um, process of variance swaps curves, we want to find a state space, and this is described in this proposition. So here we assume that our kernel has this resolvent of the first kind, this L, and this is uh, non-decreasing in this sense. Um, so this is a condition which I think also could, uh, appears in, in your theorems. 
So um, here this L is a uh, matrix valued measure. We look at it uh, as the measure on the interval from S to S plus T. So this is a matrix we apply it to an element in the cone. Then this should in the cone order be smaller than this one. So for instance, for the Dirac, this is clearly satisfied because here this is zero and here we have something. And then one can prove that these variance swap curves take values in this state space. So these are functions from a plus which take values in E. So E was the state space of uh, our process set. And this F of X is, um, so these curves of this form, so we have here the identity matrix, then appears here this resolvent of the kernel times our matrix B, and we apply it to some element in E. And here we have a convolution with this NB, which I had before, so this was K minus the convolution of RB convolved with K, applied to some element H. And this H is a function where the X component, so the, the cone component, uh, has to, to um, uh, obey this order relation with the resolvent of the first kind. So this is a description of the state space, which appeared um, in a paper by Mathieu, uh, not exactly in this form, but um, can be translated to this, I think. Um, okay, so what we obtain as well is that our variance swap curves is a, a time homogeneous Markov process in this state space and satisfies this um, uh, SPDE. So in a, in a very mild sense. So let me um, uh, explain what is written here. So we have here um, the derivative of, um, of this WTX uh, with respect to space. And here in the volatility in front of, of our martingale is exactly this NB. So if B is equal to zero, then the kernel would appear. And our initial curves are exactly described by the elements that I had before in the state space. And uh, in fact, this WT um, T process is a mild solution to this SPDE in the sense that here we have to apply the shift semigroup uh, and evaluate it in the, uh, in, the, in the points, then we get this expression and one can easily show that um, the, these variance swaps that we defined solve this, um, uh, of this form and therefore a solution in the mild sense of, of this SPD. Okay, so this um, is um, uh, one property of these uh, variance swap curves. Uh, now one can study these, these SPDEs from a more abstract point of view. So you can start with these SPDEs. You can embed your state space E here, so the space of, of uh, variance swap curve in some appropriate Hilbert space, and then you can study existence and uniqueness of your SPDEs. Um, and you can, of course, translate the existence and the uniqueness there to your stochastic Volter equations. Uh, and in particular, then you have to verify certain invariance properties, which are here by construction satisfied. So in particular, if you are uh, on the boundary of your cone, then for, for, for some x, then you also have to be that at zero because this is um, what what enters here uh, in this martingale. So the, the martingale characteristics depend all, only on this wt of zero. And therefore, so this is the volatility that you have here, for instance, if this is a Brownian motion, there would be wt of zero and this has to be, has to vanish whenever you are uh, at the boundary of your state space. Okay, so these are some remarks and now I come, so this was very general, there was no um, assumption on the form of the characteristics, but now I come to the affine case and assume for simplicity that we have only the cone case, then the notation gets a little bit simpler. And the martingale now is an affine martingale in the sense that the characteristics are, here I only say linear functions. So um, this C is what Martin called uh, a, I think. Um, so this is the C is um, a linear function in the component in the in yeah in this uh, components of X i. So this is here we plug in only this, the the evaluation of our variance swap at zero. So um, 
this stands in front of the Brownian motion and similar for the jump part, we plug this, this compensator is a linear function in this WT of zero. Okay, so this is um, now the, the, the affine case. In, uh, we will also in, uh, need to introduce this polar cone of our state space, which, which is this, uh, which I denote by U. So these are measures uh, which are in the set of d-dimensional vector value signed measures, such that if we take an element of our state space and integrate it against such a measure, that this is non-positive. Uh, and here this, this bracket is simply this, um, this, this integral. And another notation is um, for some function which is defined on this space of d-dimensional vector valued measures to R, we denote this uh, derivative with respect to mu, so this such a measure is the directional derivative in direction of delta x. So um, this is a function of a measure and we, we have that. Now, um, we need, again, some existence assumption, also uh, like in the theorem of Martin. So what we suppose here is that this uh, SPDE, uh, where we have this martingale, which, is, um, which has affine characteristics, that this has a weak solution with values in our state space, which is a subset of continuous <laughs> functions. Uh, such that for, for every mu in our d-dimensional signed measures intersected with the domain uh, of, uh, of this operator, of this minus d over dx, has a weak solution. So in the sense we take this, this wtx and integrate it against the dual elements. And then we do not need to care about the notion of stochastic integration in some uh, infinite dimensional sense because here we always get some, some uh, d valued elements that we integrate against Brownian motion or uh, the corresponding jump, uh, jump uh, martingale. Okay, this is the assumption. And then the, the theorem says under this assumption, our variance uh, uh, swap process is an FM process uh, in the sense that for all dual elements mu in this, this cone intersected with the domain uh, of this minus d over dx, um, that if we take here the uh, expected value of the exponentials of our variance swap process integrated against such il ele um, elements, then this satisfies this uh, transport equation, uh, which is simply the analog of the Riccati equations. Um, so the Riccati equation can always be um, uh, post in this transport way, and it only tells that if we take the time derivative of this, then this is the same as taking the space derivative, which corresponds here to, uh, to, to the measure mu, and uh, uh, building and integrating it against this r of mu, which is a measure here. And this R of mu, so if you're familiar with usual affine processes, this is really the analog of the R uh, of, of usual affine processes, so the, the, uh, the vector field uh, corresponding to the psi. Uh, here it is that the initial value is a measure, and therefore we, we, this, this R also takes values in a measure and is given here by this minus d of dx of mu dx. So this corresponds to the linear part. And here we have the quadratic part, this C, which uh, is the same thing as Martin had with this A. So here we have something quadratic. Uh, and here we have the jump part. And um, here appears always a Dirac at zero, which means that here we only get a contribution at zero, which has to do with the fact that the characteristics that enter in the martingale only depend on this wt of zero. So this is, um, this is the, the analog of, of r, uh, of the usual r in, in this setting. And if we have a mild solution to this corresponding Riccati PDE, so this, would, this is simply this expression here, then we really have uh, this uh, exponential linear form because we only suppose linear characteristics of our um, expected value of the exponential of, of, um, of our variance swaps. So this is... Um, the affine thing and, and clarifies now uh, um, 
is, it is um, the whole variant swap curve and in fact the zeros component corresponds then to the to the wall dressing. Um, and this is what I want to say here. So if we approximate uh, this measure mu by some u um, which is in the dual cone times the Dirac at zero, then we get exactly the characteristic or the, the uh, Laplace transform of, uh, of the Volterra process because the zeros component of this W is exactly an affine Volterra process and plugging in this in the previous formula gives exactly the same formula that Martin had. So here this, uh, these are the initial curves. So this is the expected value in fact of um, the Volterra process um, uh, with maturity small t and here appear always this, this these um, conditional expectations as, as well. And this psi tilde, which is simply the integral of, of the, this nb uh, against this, this psi, where we have this as initial value, solve this, the ricatti volter equation that, that Martin had. So this is the connection between this infinite dimensional thing and, and this uh, uh, ricatti volter equation. Okay, so uh, now um, the crucial assumption was that we had uh, existence of, the, of, of this WT process and also of the Riccati equations. Now then the, the last part is to say when it exists and how we, uh, we get existence. Uh, and this is uh, a very nice construction based on standard affine processes. So we really take a standard affine process on some state space Rn plus times D. So D is a subset of Rn, such that we have um, so, um, C0 initial value, then some um, time inhomogeneous part, which is simply a deterministic function, then a linear part where we have a matrix A, which will have a very crucial uh, role here. And then um, uh, the Martin Gill part, so here I write it only with Brownian motion. And so in the, in the Rn components, nothing happens here. So this is, uh, there is no diffusion part here. Only in the Rn plus components, we have the usual thing that one needs um, in order to get admissibility. So this is the structure of this sigma matrix. And the nice thing is if you do a variation of constants and you only concentrate on the Rn plus part, which I denote by x, then you get a Volterra type equation. Simply um, by writing this in, in this variation of constants form. And so here, um, what we would like to do is to get the kernel that we have. So we would like to approximate uh, the kernels that we have via these matrix elements projected to, uh, to the x part. And we can also play around with this uh, sigma 1 and, and sigma m, which I will show in a second. So then here, I only want to say that in this particular case, in the standard FN case where we know everything, of course, the assumptions on the primal side and on the dual side of the previous theorem are satisfied. We can even express this, this uh, Riccati PDE that I had for the variant swap curves in terms of the, of the um, characteristic exponent of the original process set here that we started with. So this is only to say in this case, we, we, we have everything. And now the, the crucial thing is to, to obtain limits of that. And the idea is to make this second dimension, so we had the Rm plus part, this will then will be the, the Volterra process that we consider, and we have this, this uh, dimension in for the Rn part, and this will be made bigger and bigger, uh, and with this sigma n's that are the, the volatilities that we have, we can also play. And the kernels that we obtain finally are limits of this expression. So here we have this exponential of uh, a n where the second components grow and grow. And we take the projection to the first components times the diagonal matrix where we have here these volatilities. So, um, 
we, so we can make them grow to infinity so that we get a singularity at zero uh, and takes even here some, some matrix which corresponds to the generator of a Markov process. So we can go beyond diagonal kernels and we can in particular generate completely monotone kernels with that. And for these types of kernels, we conjecture, uh, Josef is sure, I conjecture, that um, we have <laughs> probabilistically strong uh, PDE in, in PDE sense weak solutions to this variance swap curve, SPDE, uh, also existence of the Riccati equations, and then, of course, uniqueness in law. And in particular, what is really nice is we get numerical approximations by these standard affine processes. So we only have to do these very high dimensional affine processes at these components where we have no diffusion part, and then we can generate uh, these kernels and obtain then also um, simulation techniques for these water type equations. Okay, so to conclude, we have, we got this Markovian structure for general whatever processes. Um, we have this affine transform formula f uh, in the case of affine characteristics for this variant swap curve process. And we can uh, approximate um, kernels obtained as limit of this scaled entries of matrix exponentials um, via standard affine processes. Thank you very much. Can you say something on the quality of the sort of approximation that you spoke about in the last? Uh, about bit, the rate. Yeah, yeah, and uh, basically how rough these sort of approximations would be in sort of themselves. Uh, how rough, um, so how high you have to go to the dimension in order, um, not yet. Um, I think Joseph simulated with 200 or something like this, and this uh, already looked quite rough. Uh, first we can rate, then second, uh, Yeah. But the rate we do not have yet. <laughs> yes, I believe. <laughs> Any other questions? Right, so um, I, we're slightly late, but I suggest we take five minutes so that um, we can resolve all the conjectures and maybe we'll take other things. And uh, we'll see you in five minutes.